Acute Quilters. I'm Pam Heller, Acute Quilts Cutting Expert. And I'm Erica Botker, Acute Quilts Creativity Expert. Welcome to today's trunk show called A Hot New Trend in Quilting. Today, Eric and I will be sharing inspiration galore to help you make a temperature quilt. That's right. Now for this show, we'll be discussing the popularity and versatility of temperature quilts, as well as sharing dyes that are perfect for this kind of project. We'll also be joined by special guests, Ann Peterson and Darcy Simpson, who will be sharing their inspiration behind their own temperature quilt process and patterns. It's, it's just all sorts of great things. It, it is. Now, some of you may be asking, what even is a temperature quilt? Well, that's actually a great question. In simplest terms, a temperature quilt is made of the high and low temperatures of a specific location, like here in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, usually that of the quilter's residence or choosing. The quilter decides ahead of time what colors are assigned to specific temperature ranges. For example, you might assign a deep red temperature between 90 and 100 degrees with light blue representing temperatures from the 40s to the 50s. Sure. Now, in terms of design, you can use specific or different shapes for highs and low temperatures, such as a circle for the high and a square for the low of any given day. And if you can't by t tell by now, these types of quilts are highly versatile due to every quilter's ability to customize and personalize them however they like. Quilters also use different patterns and designs to complete the process. Now, one of the main Kickstarters for Pam and me beginning our temperature quilts was the temperature quilt exhibit held earlier this year at QuiltCon 2022. Yes, and I, you know, when we watched that show, it was just so fascinating, yes. right? Yes, And there were just so many variations it, of it. It did, and the whole concept really inspired right. us. So today, Eric and I will be showing you the process or the progress of our quilts, how we decided the shapes and the patterns we're using to help give you a hand in your own creation. That's right. Now we have a lot of fun for you, so we want to get the show started. As always, we've got cool giveaways, a fire hot trunk show, and some special offers. All right, let's begin our show today with our first guest, Ann Peterson. Ann is a quilter and an electrical engineer. There you go, yeah. living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. She started quilting nearly 30 years ago as an off hours method to relieve stress from her engineering job all day, which is great because you and I, yes. we do have a day job. We do, we do. And that's what we do it to. Yes. At night yes. too. Yes. And dyes fabrics, she designs pieces, and quilts. She really enjoys her long arm quilting machine. Her quilting business called Brown Paws Quilting is a nod to her five furry little kids. And without further ado, welcome to the show, Miss Anne. Hi, Hi great. Thank Hello. you for having me. Yeah. Today's <laughs> show is all about temperature quilts, and we'd love to know what inspired you to make your first temperature quilt. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. We're um, so glad you're here. <laughs> thanks. Um, well, I, I started mine in, um, mine was for the year 2020. So I had started thinking about doing a temperature quilt back in 2019. And at the time I was seeing a lot of knitted um, and crocheted temperature quilts oh, where you sure. pick a particular color and just do a row for that, for, for that color. And at the time I saw less quilt temperature quilts, but I thought, well, this would be kind of a fun concept to do. So, um, you know, it looked like a good thing to do day in and day out plot the temperature and make a block and see how that came out. And as it turned out, 2020 was a great year to have a project like that to focus on. Yeah. So right. it was a good project. Right. So, and what was your process like for developing and designing your temperature quilt? So I, I really like color uh, in quilts. So the kind of the more color, the better. And so I started, you know, with, as you referred to, temperature quilts can be very simple. They can just be one temperature, like the average temperature for a given day or you know multiple different uh, um, metrics for a given day. So I decided I wanted more color. So I did a low and a high like you talked about. Um, and I went, uh, being an engineer, I've actually learned more uh, with Excel through quilting and quilt math than I have at work. <laughs> Um, so I went, I found a website, I used Wonderground, um, and they have a lot of tools that you can look at both current temperature and um, historical temperatures. Oh, right. We've heard of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I pull, I actually pulled a year's worth of data. I pulled all of the 2019 data for Albuquerque and, uh, and looked at the distribution of temperatures in Albuquerque to kind of get a sense of what range was I going to have to cover and how many fabrics was I going to need. Um, so started with Wonderground um, to, to do that. Um, yeah, so here on the slide, um, on the left, I think it's on the left, <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in EQ8, um, I, I chose a block, and you can kind of see my block here was a rectangle uh, with the upper triangle um, uh, inserted in. And the rectangle, the bigger piece was the high temperature, and the smaller piece was the low temperature oh, okay. for the day. So I created my plan, you know, my block and my plan. Um, I used EQ8 to orient the blocks in different ways to make the triangles come together in those diamond shapes in different places across the quilt. And then you can kind of see my snippet there of, um, you know, I didn't want to buy, I didn't want to have, you know, 25 different fabrics sure. for my highs and lows. So based on the distribution of temperatures that I ran into, I plotted, um, here are the different increments. I came up with like 13 different increments. I had bought a fat quarter bundle of fabrics that I thought I wanted to use and thought it had a pretty good range of temperatures that would, you know, show how things were moving through the year and, you know, made myself a little key and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do with the range on a given day. Okay. How many days in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is it less than 10 degrees? Uh, I think it was two i think the low <laughs> so the low right overnight. yeah 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 because here in nebraska <laughs> that's like months we do less than that that's amazing i would yeah. not have thought that okay so one of the biggest elements of temperature quilts is fabric and you talked about how you didn't want to have 25 colors um but did you decide like did you want to have solids did you want to have patterns because eric and i even though we kind of googled the same uh chart we chose completely different kinds of fabric. So how did you do that? Well, for reasons that I couldn't tell you now, because I actually kind of like solids, but I decided <laughs> I really didn't want to use solids. I wanted to use something that had a little bit more texture. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that photo that you showed kind of showed, it's, it was a blender. So it was very right. solid reading, but there was some pattern to it. Okay. Um, so I'd, I'd actually just found a fat quarter bundle that I thought had a pretty good range of colors. I wanted to really cover the whole you know, purple to right. dark red sort of range. Um, so found that fat quarter bundle and sort of foolishly thought, well, this will be enough. And then when I started actually plotting, this is how big your block is and this is right. how many days, like, oh, I'm going to need a lot more fabric. And, um, <laughs> you know, did that up front so I could go order it. Because if you do a solid, you can always right. get more. If you get a pattern, you're kind of at risk of things going out of print. So. Right. Um, yeah, I did a lot of that planning up front just to make sure I wouldn't wind up halfway through the quilt and go, okay, I'm, now I'm kind of stuck. Now I don't have this blue she's, anymore. She's very yeah, organized. I, she is. She's yes. an engineer. So your temperature <laughs> quilt was featured at QuiltCon earlier this year. I have not submitted anything to QuiltCon. What was that experience like creating and submitting a quilt? Well, it was good. I had, so the temperature exhibit, the temperature quilt exhibit was a special exhibit. So it was juried. You had to get selected to have it going, but was not judged while it was there. Um, so I'd submitted quilts in the past to be. It is. You know, yeah, there, there, there we are. My, my quilt and I at, at QuiltCon. And I want to say the exhibit had like on the order of maybe 20 some quilts. Right. So it was one of, of, of about 20. Um, so it was fun to, um, to submit it and then in this case get accepted. I was really, you know, thrilled that it got accepted. And, you know, I think being in kind of a unique place like Albuquerque um, helped, right? Cause I right. think they wanted to show different areas and then people, diff different approaches that people took to temperature quilts. I mean, mine was pretty primary colored. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that did very muted um, palettes, which oh, was interesting sure. to see. Um, some people did like just a block. There was like a block and then uh, like flying geese around and each day, each goose, <laughs> if you yeah, will, was, sure. the, um, was the day of the month. And so really neat um, approaches and palettes to, you know, the same concept, but in different locations and, you know, different approaches. So it was, it was really fun to, to, to be there and fun to see what everybody had done. All right. Well, I love that. Are you working on any projects currently? Anything well, exciting? Well, yeah, 
Yeah, so a couple of things. Actually, the um, QuiltCon special exhibit list came out yesterday. Yes. And um, there's the, it's 10 years of QuiltCon, and so they're um, focusing on X's. So X, quilts with oh, X design yeah, for, oh, for 10. I actually have one. Um, so I am going to submit that. I think that would be fun. Wonderful. And then um, I, I spent actually the weekend using my AccuQuilt cutting up scraps because I'm trying to cut up scraps and clean up my um, my sewing room and make tops from things that I have laying around. So trying go. to work through a bunch of that. I am submitting one for the log cabin. Oh, cool. Yeah. There's a dive for that. I gotta start thinking. Okay. <laughs> well, Anne, is there anywhere that our quilters can learn more about you and your quilting journey? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have a website, it's uh, brownpaws.com. Um, again, my I have a lot of furry friends, and so it's named after one of my one of my dogs. And I actually have a couple of posts about the temperature quilt and going to QuiltCon and the whole planning process and sort of how I went through the whole thing. So you can find that there. And then I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. So you can follow kind of day in and day out progress of things that I'm working on. I love it. Oh, that's great. Well, Anne, thank you so much for coming on today's show, sharing your inspiration about temperature quilts. It was great having you on. Thanks for coming, Anne. All right, for we'll see you me. later. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, quilters. Now, in the spirit of temperature quilts, like Anne's fabulous one. So phenomenal. So fun. But she's right. The fabric really does read as a, as a solid. Yes. But yes. when we saw the picture of the bundle, we know that it we wasn't. We know that it wasn't. We want to know if you've made a temperature quilt before. Is your answer going to be yes, no, or it's on my bucket list? Yeah. Voting is now open, so let us know your answers. If you're watching via the registration link or YouTube, you can click on the vote box below or to the right of the chat box. And if you're watching on Facebook, vote on the box that displays over the video. I would love to know if... If it's on your bucket list, what dyes you're going to use? Wait till oh, the yeah. end because we're going to talk about yeah. all different dyes. Yeah, we're, we've got we've got ideas for you. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, Pam, but I'm even more excited for the rest of the show after talking to Anne. She is so inspiring. Temperature quilts are so much fun, and I didn't think they were going to be as fun as they are. Right, right. And quilters, in addition to fiery inspiration, we've got some special offers in place to help you get started on your next project. All right, to get your order in, open up a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party. It will take you directly to the site. You can place your order. That way you won't miss a minute of our fiery show. That's right. Now today marks the beginning of our special Labor Day sale. There we go. You can get 35% off regular prices of select categories including some go cutters, dies, cubes, storage, and books. Storage, always important. No code is needed to redeem the offer, and all eligible items are already marked down for you. All right, you can also get started on or continue on your AccuQuilt journey with our smallest, most portable cutter, the Go Me Fabric Cutter Starter Set. For only $89.99 with significant savings. This starter set includes two dies to make over 180 patterns, a cutting mat, and five e pa easy patterns to get you started in a flash. It's already marked down, so you don't need a code to redeem the offer. That's right. Now, you can find many of our products at your local AccuQuilt retailer. To find the retailer closest to you, just go to the top right side of the website for the store locator. And if you don't happen to have an AccuQuilt retailer near you, well, be sure to let your, lo your lo local, there, there we, we go, quilt shop know you'd like to shop for AccuQuilt products in their store. All right, quilters, are you inspired to get going on a temperature quilt of your own? There are so many ways that you could go with us on this project, and I just love how creativity just moves you through it. Yes, that's right, it really does. Now, if you're thinking about shapes to use and you're wondering, I always think that the cube system is a great place to start. So the cube, the Go Mix and Match cubes and companion sets, corners and angles, offer so much flexibility and so many options. So we're gonna take a look at that first. And don't forget, if you aren't familiar with our Go Cube system, it all starts with Go Mix and Match blocks. Mm -hmm. They now come in seven finished sizes, four, five, six, eight, nine, and 10, and 12. And when you add their matching companion sets, you can create over 216 blocks. So we're gonna open up the four inch cube, ta-da. Yes. And we're gonna pull out the skinny one first. How come, Erica? Well, A, that way we don't break a nail. But the other thing is, is because we wanna be sure that you see that inside of it, you're gonna get your mat, 
and your pattern booklet that you need to get going. Oh, because what happens with that amount? Absolutely nothing. There we go. All right, so the first thing you need to know is that the cube your shapes system. Are backwards. <laughs> and are you impressed that I knew that from the top? <laughs> yes. Hi, howdy. Um, the first thing you need to know is that the cube system is based on a four patch system. Da -da -da. Shape number one in every cube is a square. Four of these sewn together in this case makes a four inch finished block. That's right. Okay. So everything really is gonna relate right back to the, that four patch shape and that shape number one. Now shape number two are smaller squares. Four of these sewn together equals shape number one. So there we go. So now you can have a four patch within your four patch. I didn't hold it up, I'm sorry, Justin. Justin, it's okay. All right, shape number three is my all-time favorite shape, half square triangles. The great thing to remember about our half square triangles is we've cut off the dog ears. All of our geometric shapes have that quarter inch seam allowance mm -hmm. built in to help you get started. We're gonna cut with one of these, so I'm gonna pull we are. it out okay. today. Put that out there. Shape number four in every single cube are quarter square triangles. On it. Four of these sewn together equals shape number one. 16 of these sewn together would give you a four inch finished square. Look at how fun like that this. is. Okay. And we will continue. Don't forget the shapes in every, the same are, the shapes in every cube are the same. They're just different sizes. There you go. You got it. Shape number five in every cube are small half square triangles. Now, Erica, some people are gonna look at this and say, I am never gonna cut those half square triangles. Oh, but you are. Oh, contraire. This is our workhorse, and we're gonna show you some of the ways that you're gonna want to use that coming yeah. right up. All right, shape number six are not just squares, but square on point. They're meant to live on their tippy toes. And Erica, what's that shape you need on the outside to make well, a square? that's that small half square triangle we just talked about, our friend number five. Yeah. All right. Shape number seven in every cube are parallelograms. There we go. And what you're going to need is you're going to have shape number five to the long end. Somebody asked me that the other day. Oh, here's the long end because there's two on the yes, die board. Yes, there are two on the die board. Long end. And that way it will equal a rectangle. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was a rectangle in oh, every look. cube, Erica? Wait, oh, wait. Look, look. Shape eight. There it is. And there they are. So when you sew shape seven with those. Um, sorry, sorry. Justin and I are going like back and forth between up you and You are down. not in sync over here we today. We aren't. Then it equals those eight shapes. We should have okay. like tried to juggle or something before the show. No, so they are could. the only ones who know how to yeah, do that. Yeah, I don't do that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put my little cube Perfect. back. Perfect, okay. So we pulled out shape number three, which is the large half square triangle from the cube because that's what I used for my, that's what I'm using for my temperature quilt. Right. So we're going to cut some for you. We are. And we're gonna follow the instructions on how to sub cut our fabric. We're gonna measure from here to here at a quarter of an inch on either side and rough cut with the fabric. Make sure you're cutting on that length of grain. Um, I have two different colors sewn or cut together because I'm gonna sew them together. I might as well cut them together. All righty. Our four, five, six, eight, and nine inch cubes will work in our go me. That's true. But today I'm gonna use our go big. So I'm using that two inch finished half square triangle, like I said. One half of the square is gonna be the, is the low for each day and one half is the high for each day. Now in mine, I've added a solid square at the end of every month to keep a marker between the months and make it easier for me to keep track of my months. But also, cause then you can look and see, you can kind of follow along. It, this to me looks like Albuquerque, New Mexico. It does, it does. So this is what we mean about saving you extra time. That quarter inch seam allowance means that when you sew that and press it together, you're done. You do not have to go back and trim off all of those little bunny ears. Right. Now, if you looked at Anne's quilt, she used the companion set corners. Yes. So to make the companion sets work, you need the original mix and match cubes. Right. All right. You do. Now the companion sets only have four dies. The mix and match cubes have eight. 
We're gonna pull out that skinny one first. It's gonna have a pattern book yes. and a mat so you don't break your fingernail. We're gonna open it up, okay? Now, um, they, they come with these. You got the wrong cube. The chisel? Yes, it's in That's the other one. That's not the right one. I know. It's in corners, it, not angles. It says corners on the outside. It's okay. Never mind. It's okay. We'll find it. We'll find it. We know what it looks like. It looks just like we, this. We have one here in the dream studio. <laughs> There's bound to be one here somewhere. Okay. Oh, thank you, Brock. Brock's on it. There we go. Hey, and I bet we've got a chisel in there. I bet we do. It's shape number nine. It is. It's going to be right here, and it's our chisel shape. Okay. And you're going to put that together with that small half score triangle from our mix and match cube on the end. And this is exactly how um, Anne had put hers together. And then when she was putting them like this. together, she was building those squares in the middle. But keep a important note is, what about the chisels, Pam? They are directional they shapes. They are directional. So if you want them facing all the same way, you want them all facing up. But if you want them going different directions, you want to fan fold your fabric. So she would have cut hers two different directions because she had them going together to create yes. that square look in the yes. center. Yeah. Yeah. So look at that. that look at that. All and right. remember, same sizes, same shape in every cube. So if you don't want to use the four inch, Use the six inch, use the eight inch. Use whatever size you want. That's right. That's, um, again, a great part about making temperature quilts is that flexibility. And Eric and I, we've made lots of videos on how to use the cube and to cut the shapes and yes. sew them together. So yep. if you need more information about the cubes and our companion set corners and angles, check out our website. That's right. Now let's take a look back at some of the quilts from QuiltCon 2022 that inspired us to get started. Oh, wait till you see these Oh quilters. my gosh. So the first one that we're going to look at is Mother Nature Bats Last by Joan Chow of Chicago, Illinois, and this is the year 2020. So she did hot, she did hers so that it looks like lightning bolts. I love that. And again, you can see she's gone January through December. You can see our Midwest oh, heat yeah. in the summer right there. Yes. And this is producer Joe's favorite. Yes. All right, next we have Temperature Quilt 2020, Stratford, Prince Edward Island, Canada. Oh my goodness, by Jean Mackey. Now note, binding changes from happy orange to dark gray in March, marking COVID and lockdown. So this is amazing, right? So it's happy right. and fun, and then it gets all dark and gray. And you I can love the quilting. see that around it. Yeah, then that wavy quilting. They get a lot of snow up there too. So much snow. So much snow. Now the next one we have is Weather Bubble Temperature Quilt. And this is from Linnithgow, Stratfordshire in the UK. It's by Joan Avery. She started hers March 28th, 2020, just after the first lockdown yes. started in the UK. Yes. Now she reform cut her circles and her large circles, she said were from good days. The small ones were from bad days and she said having this to make and work on every day really helped her keep centered during lockdown and, and the pandemic. Joe, there are dyes for both of those shapes. There are. All right Miss Erica let's take a look at what you've got going with your temperature quote so far. Okay. Because Erica and I even though we had the same conversation saw the same inspiration. Right. Uh, we, very different looking. We googled the same color palette. Right. So right. So you could kind right. of start in the same way. Very different. Very different. Okay, so it's hard to go after those great quilt con quilts. Ah. So, but here we go. So this is, this is the, this is my quilt so far. So we started March 1st of this year. Now, March 1st was super cold and then it went super hot. Yes, because you can see that. Yeah. We've got that orange coming in. Yeah. So if we lay it down. Yes. Um, yeah, you can see we were up in March and we oh, hit. I have this purple grunge. Well, I happen to have some of that too. So um, oh, I'll stop I, for I, the grunge. Pull, I pulled out some that I already had and then we'll I put love some this others. Fabric. 
And yeah, I was kind of like Anne. I wanted that movement in my fabrics. And you just have square triangles, my all-time favorite I shape. I did. And I've kind of um, twisted them around. And yes. that way I, I've been getting some interesting secondary, secondary designs. designs. And, and So the black here is the end of the, the month. The black here is the end of the month. And it's got kind of metallics in it. So there's I kind of a metallic so thing. OK, so you're holding out because show us. OK, so this is how I've pieces. been keeping track of my pieces. So this is this little bin I got, which happily is very different than mine. Very different. So this is an unusually organized for me. I'm pretty excited. Actually. <laughs> I was I was actually rather pleased with myself. It's Grinch, too. You know, it's Look at this we have this blue. But you could see how this orange print really and this is the only one that's a this is the most distinctive print. It really pops out of the quilt. Right. And then you have your little handy dandy chart where you where you first right, started, right. right? And and I'm going in like 4 or 5 degree increments because we have a lot of temperatures and that's what's put more color into sure. the quilt. Sure. So, I keep my handy dandy chart and we just I just turn my squares around and there you go. But I started out cutting with that die from yes. the four inch cube, yes. but then I decided to work a little faster. Like faster than our dies? What are you talking about? Of course not faster than our dies, yeah. but I started with that shape three from the cube, but we actually have a die that cuts oh. 12 half square triangles on a die Here. in the same size instead of two. Oh so when you've got a lot to cut, that's really amazing. So here is a look at that die. Okay, so here's the lines between them. There's all of look these half that. square triangles. So I can do this math in my head. If you put six layers of fabric <laughs> on this die, you would cut 72 half square triangles in one pass through the cutter. That's very impressive, Pam. Yeah, that I could do that math. <laughs> but again, I, I love the fact that you did this because I also had a change in my process. In your cutting method? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, now that we've looked at that die. I think we should give one I away. I think we should give one away as well. So. Let us pick a winner. And we're gonna pick a winner from somebody who registered for the show. All right, and um, our giveaways are just one way we like to thank our AccuQuilt community for registering and watching our live events. All right, the lucky winner of a Go Multi Half Square die is, drum roll please. It's Dolores S. from Taylorsville, Kentucky. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dolores. This is my all-time favorite shape, house for triangles. I love it. There you go. All right, quilters, if you want more inspiration like what you see on our shows, there is a new blog post every week. And today's blog post, which we'll post later in the day, is yes. all about temperature quilts, right? That's right. And there are pictures of even more great temperature quilts in the blog as well. So you want it this afternoon, go ahead, go to the blog when it goes live around the middle of the afternoon. It's going to have a link back to the show if you want to watch it again, but it's going to show even more of the quilts from QuiltCon that we're showing in the show. You know, when you get that three o'clock hunger, just get just to, the to the blog and get your cookie. There you Discover go. everything we mentioned and more when you just subscribe to the AccuQuilt blog. I thought you were going to say if you watch the blog, then you won't eat the cookie. No, I like to read our blog while I eat a cookie. So do I. Now, Pam, you decided to go a different way with your quilt. And so I think maybe, just maybe, you were inspired by that last quilt con temperature quilt that we looked at. So you started with shape one from the four inch cube. Right. And Which finishes to a two inch square. That's right. Now, like for me, there are four squares on that die. With six layers, I could cut 24 at a time, mm -hmm. which, right, is a great starting point. But you can also make two inch finished squares using every quilter's best friend, the two and a half inch strip oh, die. Oh, yes. So before I show you my, um, this is also how I carry my quilt, mm -hmm. some of it. Um, let's use our gummy, Erica, and cut okay. some strips. Let's do that. Did you know that there was a strip die for the two? And Why, by golly, I did. And the gummy. All right, imagine that. Imagine that. All right, quilters, I'm going to show you. We're going to talk about it real quick. So this is our smaller size two and a half inch strip. Smaller meaning there are only two two and a half right. inch uh, strips on it instead of three. But it fits perfectly in our go me. It's a great way to. It, you know, I was thinking the other day about maybe you have limited space or maybe right. you're right. you know trying to consolidate some things. This is a great cutter to have mm -hmm. right there. You and I have one next to our. 
Uh, we um, do so for those moments in time when we realize we didn't cut enough pieces of something. So just the other day, just <laughs> on Sunday when it was so hot out, um, I needed four diamonds from the morning star dye. Four, four triangles. to complete my triangles. Yes, what did yes. I say? Diamonds. diamonds. Yes, triangles. And so, ta-da! There you I go. I cut four of them on a gummy. All right, so I'm going to push it this way because the gomi will turn in any direction, both yes. directions, right? Yes. Make sure you have a 6 by 24 mat. That's right. Look at how easy this is. Because cutting strips with a rotary and cutter and rotary cutter and ruler are never this easy. You know, I'm always surprised the number of our quilters that don't realize that we have this two and a half inch strip yes. that fits in the gomi. And that's really a game changer for a lot of people. Okay, so we cut our strips. Ta-da. Okay. They're perfect, show everybody they in the middle. They are perfect, just... no dipsy doodles. Look at that. Dipsy, dipsy doodles. Dipsy doodles. Okay, now, here's kind of our pro tip for this. Yes. So I am gonna cut squares. So I'm gonna turn it right here at 90 mm -hmm. degrees. And you can go all the way down the die board. Yes. Okay, but watch, I'm gonna go back and forth. How many layers can I go? We can do six layers. So we're gonna right. have a little tail. We're now, gonna... for this one, normally, am I go big? Um, I don't worry about that tail because there's right. a little extra room. But here in the go me, it's not so, I'm just gonna trim it right here. And then we can. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think I was gonna do something oh. different? <laughs> yeah, we and then we could go back and forth six layers. Well, quilters, we gotta use every inch of our fabric, right? right? So you can go all the way down the die board. Yeah. Okay, will you hold this while I move our little go me again? Okay, you wanna go this direction? Oh. We'll, we'll show them how to use this. See, just so that, just so you, you say, it can go both ways. This is one um, that I take uh, when I travel as well. Yeah. Because it's so easy. Lightweight, six pounds. Yeah. Six pounds. Super easy. All right, I'm gonna move the gummy. Okay. Do you wanna show everybody our squares? Yes. yes, I will. All right, here's our square. So look. We just cut this. Boy, you had all of your cutting done for your quilt, I bet, in no time. So fast. So fast. Look at that whole stack. Yeah. All right. So, so some temperature quilts will use just one color and a shape per day, and they'll use an average temperature for the day. But you and I both decided to record highs and lows from each day because, quite frankly, it's <laughs> sometimes pretty dramatic here. Right. Okay. Full disclosure. Sometimes I'm a lazy quilter. So I decided to use the square for my low temperature and fuse a circle onto the square for my high temperature. Okay, so show and tell time, Pam. Yes, I'm gonna show you. Um, and, okay. Yeah, I'll let you pull that off there. Okay, so here were my fabrics that I chose. And notice I just chose solids. Yes. Right? Yep. You have lots of different um, colors and Yeah, patterns. I went a little crazy on mine. You, you did, but that's okay. And then look, here is my super high-tech way of keeping track of them. Look. Zippy bags. Zippy bags with your temperature range written down on and top of it. And squares and circles, circles. Already cut. Already in so the same bag. So then I can just put them right here and this. So here this is, is fabulous. Yeah. Here is my March. I'll move these out of the way. I know, super high tech, right? Yeah. But it works for me. So here's March, here's the end of the month. Now, I don't know yet how I'm gonna put mine together. Oh, okay. So basically, I created the squares and then I just applique, iron those on. Mm -hmm. Because when I go to quilt it, I'm just gonna do all over quilting. You know, it's my favorite thing to yes, do. Yes, it is. But for me, this has just been a great experience because now I can just go and put them all together and I just iron it you, down. Do you do yours every day or do you do about I a do week or like so a at a time? week at a time. Yeah, I've been doing about a week at a time. I was looking to see if any of this was mine. Right here, 16 to 20. <laughs> Look at that, quilters. <laughs> Taking the squares home with me. Because <laughs> you never know when you might run you out of fabric. You never know when it's going to be 16 to 20 degrees in Nebraska. So this is how I did it. You can totally do it however you want it. Oh, and this was the other thing that's to make you yes. laugh. 
When I ironed down my circles, I purposely made them go off. -sync. I was just going to say, you kind of have them all over the place. Because I didn't want to have to measure in the center and find the center. And oh, so you're just really wonky. going just, all over. It's like my scrappy quilts. Yeah. Okay. That's mine. Okay, so you use... And I got squares. I'm yeah. super excited. So for that circle, you use the one and a quarter inch, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. So that is a multiple circle die. So it's over here. I got it. Is it over there? Yeah. Okay. And this is some of my blue <laughs> while I'm cutting circles. We work smart instead of hard right. quilters. Um, so since I cut a two inch finished square, right. I wanted it to have some space around it. So this is our multiples die. Yeah. And when we cut fusible, Erica, how many layers can we cut? Oh, up to four. That fusible is going to count as half a layer. Right. So when I was cutting squares, whatever was left, I fused it and I cut circles. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes we get our we get so excited that our machine gets excited yeah. too. Yeah. It forgets, loses its head. It does. But this is great because you can cut so many at a time. Oh my gosh, yes. So look I just all your did circles. a bunch. Yep. I have a little string there. There so we go. look, look at all of these circles and they're all absolutely perfect. Well, when you said that somebody cut theirs by hand, Joe from Canada cut hers by hand, holy smokes. Yes. I thought, no, 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 there's she a She had a method behind her madness. She was doing it. She was. As no, to help her. To help her and, Focus to, and to show absorb. the different, the different, you know, how the day was. Right, yeah. All right, so let's give away Ooh. a circles die okay. to a lucky viewer who registered for today's show. All right, so let's do it. The lucky winner of a go circle die, that exact one, it cuts half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, and one and a quarter inch circles. Drum roll, please. It's Danette H. from Montana City, Montana. Congratulations. I love the circle die. Oh, she's gonna have lots of color yeah. range in hers. Quilters, be sure to tune in every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. Now, this weekend, um, I am going on a quilt retreat, and I'm getting packed, and I'm going out of town. So the lovely Erica is going to be hosting our show I tomorrow. would let her take the day <laughs> off. I know, sometimes they let me do that. Uh, she is going to be using her favorite dye, the Glorified Nine Patch. That's right. Last week, I used my favorite, the Morning Star. Right? So it's favorite time. Register um, for tomorrow's chance, uh, for tomorrow's show for the chance to win a door prize. It's going to be tons of fun. Thank That's you right. for covering for me Happy while I got Happy to it. do it. I'm going to share what inspired us to have a glorified yes. nine patch die. Wait till you see. Yep. So the one thing you need to get started on your temperature is your fabric, right? Right. So we decided to go with lows and highs from every day because right. we've got such a wide range of temperatures here in Nebraska and we both decided to go with, with brighter colors. Right, now if you decide to go with the average temperature for each day, you won't need as many different colors. So the same can be said if you say, live in say Long Beach, California, where it's pretty much you know 68 to 75 right. every day. If you live in Long Beach, California, you should do blue and white. <laughs> or you could dry. have <laughs> you could have like just two degrees per color. Oh, then so it would you be would shrink the range. So then you could so like yeah. sixty eight to seventy would be one color, oh, and, and seventy one and seventy two would be another yeah. color because that way you could pull more colors. Mine are nine there. degrees because in Nebraska it is so cold and so hot. Yeah, I think mine are five. But there you, go. you know, there's just. Okay, I think that's a good idea. All right, and even though Pam and I worked from the same kind of basic colors, mm -hmm. I went with prints, you went with solids. Right, and I totally was not nearly as organized as Anne. Oh, I didn't no. do math to figure no. out how much fabric I needed for my temperature quilt. In fact, in my quilting head, I thought, oh, if I run out of that solid, it's a solid. I could right. probably find something close to it and use it down here in November. Right. And I did the same thing with fat quarters. Right. Um, sometimes I had like a quarter of a yeah. yard or a third of a yard, especially if it felt like it was going to be something I was going to see a lot of. Right. Like my red, I have yeah. a half yard of red. Yeah. I think I got a half yard of the hot. dark blue, but I really like dark blue. So. Yeah. 
Anyway, I found ones that I could just get more solids. Right, and I use some pretty basic colors. I mean, I use grunge, that's by Basic Gray for Moda, and I use some of those spotted colors. I those are those. Uh, Ruby Star Society, that's also for Moda. Moda, not just for grunge. I use solids in many um, I already had. So I use Kona solids and Bella solids by Moda. Okay, well, one of the things that I really love about it is that we're working from the same basic rules and right. yet our quilts look so entirely different. Right. And that's like living in the same place with the same temperatures. Right. And again, we just Googled temperature quilts. We found kind of a chart that we thought yeah, was kind of cool. Yeah. And so, all right, so we want you to jump right in and join us because see the temperature quilt doesn't matter what month you so start. Fun. Start Thursday, which is September 1st. There you go, there you um, go. And be sure to visit our blog. We're gonna tell you how to do it. It's gonna be awesome. That's right. And we've talked about some options for making temperature quilts, but we just keep coming up with more ideas. So we wanna share some of them with you. Plus we've got one more amazing this temperature one's... quilt to inspire you from QuiltCon. Remember, there's more on the blog. Okay, so this one is Objective 2020. Okay, this is by far my favorite of the ones we've shown today. This one is from Hopkins, Minnesota by Laura Nisi, and the pattern is Freewheeling Single Girls by Denise Schmidt. Each block here is a month. Okay, look at the top left. So January, all just cold in Minnesota. All just cold, all just cold, like pretty <laughs> uniformly cold too. And then day one is in the 12 o'clock spot. She said oh. it was an unusual year because there were no temperatures over 100 or under zero. Wow. And she used average temperatures. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right, that was so inspiring. <laughs> I love that I one. I think it's great. And speaking of inspiring, check out our Labor Day sale. You can get 35% off uh, regular price of select categories, including go cutters, dies, cubes, storage, and books. Great day to stock up on those cubes and companion sets. All items that are already marked down, so no code needed to redeem this offer. You can also get our smallest and most portable cutter, the Go Me Fabric Cutter Starter Set that we showed you for just $89.99. The starter set includes two dies to make over 180 patterns, a cutting mat, and five easy patterns to get you started. It's already marked down and you don't even need a code to redeem the offer. Uh, fun fact, so um, I work out in the morning at the pool and the lady next to me is a quilter. Oh. And she said, I've heard of your system. And I said, go check out our videos online. And yes. she told me this morning she got herself a little go me to get her started. Oh, fantastic. I know. So fun. Thanks, Sue. <laughs> All right, quilters, it's time to turn up the heat with our next guest, Dar Darcy Simpson. Darcy has been quilting for 20 years, which led to designing three patterns and creating tutorials for her website called Darcy Quilts. With her pet named Scout, Darcy has the perfect quality control supervisor to arrange her quilt blocks on the design floor. Everyone's shaking their heads. Yep, yeah, yeah, we all know. If she's not quilting, Darcy can be found hiking or at her day job as an elementary school office manager. All right, here's a look at Darcy discussing temperature quilts. Hi everybody, my name is Darcy from Darcy Quilts and I'm here today to talk to you about my temperature quilt. So first thing to know about my quilt is that I used historical data. So sometimes people will do a temperature quilt from January 1st to December 31st of the current year and work on it just one block, one square at a time throughout the course of the year. Mine is actually historical data from the early 80s. So my quilt actually starts with the day that I was born and then it ends on my first birthday. So this temperature data is from the early 80s. Um, and I used uh, uh, Weather Underground to get my temperature data, but there are lots of places that you can get historical temperature data um, as well. My quilt does every single block is a single day, and I've got both daily high temperatures and daily low temperatures available within each of my blocks because that was available for the data for the year that I did this quilt. I also made a quilt for a family member where the weather underground, it didn't have quite as much of the historical data. I was only able to get the daily highs for that year. Um, and so I do have a tutorial available for just daily high temperatures, whereas this quilt in particular, and what I'm gonna talk about today, includes both daily highs and daily lows. Um, and then the other thing to note about my quilt is I used very much a rainbow of fabrics with the maroon being the hottest, 
down through the pinks, oranges, yellows. Those are still kind of warm summer temperatures. The greens, the teals are sort of like that 50 to 60 range that was common in both the spring and the fall. And then the bright blue, the navy blue, the purple, those are the colder temperatures. And the coldest temperatures are everything below freezing is the white fabric. Um, and there are some days here, I don't know if you can see it because it's over on the edge, the entire daily high temperature and daily low temperature were both below freezing. So some of my blocks are just a rectangle and don't show the difference between the high and the low because the temperatures were both within the same temperature range. So my quilt is made up of two different blocks, um, but they go together in much the same way. So every quilt or every block is a two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle for the daily high and then a two and a half inch square for the daily low. The, the two different blocks are that sometimes the diagonal was sewn in a downward motion from corner to corner and sometimes the diagonal was sewn in an upward motion from corner to corner and you go back and forth between those two to create the block. I do have graphs and charts and layouts available in a more detailed tutorial than what I'm able to give in this quick video. If you've got any questions, shoot me an email. I'd love to chat. Okay, I'm going to shoot her an email because I'd love to Just chat with her. Just because we can. Just because we can. <laughs> okay, who would have thought to do it the year you were born? That is so clever. I that love that. So maybe you're a Lola or a Grammy. You could right. do the year your grandkids were oh, born. Oh, that's a cool idea. Like a temperature quilt. That That'd is be a super cool, cool idea. So this is a, I'm sorry, I'm throwing this at you, but this is a chisel shape that is the same size that Darcy was using. In oh, there you go. With the half square triangle at the end. Okay. So just to give you an idea, because we talked about doing it from the four inch cube, this would have been from the eight inch cube. Oh, there you so go. Just so you can see that, that size difference. Okay. okay. All right, quilters, if you want to see Eric and me and all of our AccuQuilt antics, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok to see our behind the scenes videos. We always have so much fun. And we also love to share our AccuQuilt communities quilts and stories on our social media page. So be sure you're following us. Now, if you don't want to use squares, you could use rectangles or even um, this size, well, this t size tumbler, or you could use or the, the smaller, smaller one. Yeah, so yeah. we've got a sample of that right here. This is such a great quilt. You ready? Yes. It's called Tumbler Splash Quilt. And this Oakley does make a splash. It's a mermaid quilt. It is kind of mermaidy colors. It's mermaidy. So it's got, you're seeing those bright colors. Obviously, this isn't a temperature quilt, but you can see how easy it would be to make that into a temperature quilt. I think you'd do average. I was gonna say, I would do average. I think I'd do average Look at with how this fun one. that is, though. It is really and fun. I'm gonna tell you, Tumblr, one of our, oh, here, show you the back, sorry. Oh, here's the back. Even if awkward. this is like the first quilt you've ever made, the Tumblr is a great choice. I'm gonna say, way. I think the Tumblr quilt was the first quilt I ever made. Yeah, I think quilt. it should be. I think it should be for AccuQuilt or for anybody. Now, what about English paper piecing? So we've talked about using a basic rosette, you and right. I, because it has seven pieces, right? It's got the center and it's got six around it. So that would be for the week. Now you do average temperatures like that, okay. but maybe you want to do something a little bit different. I grabbed this one. This is the Go Tumbling Diamonds table runner pattern by Amanda Harward from Larkspur hey, Amanda. Quilts. So what about using diamonds? Diamonds are beautiful in this and that would be really fun. And I like this one because you could do like four seasons if you live where there are specifically right. four seasons. Right. Yeah, I just think this is darling. And you can make it bigger. You can make it bigger, smaller. You oh, could really adapt it however you want it to. Okay. Now that's a great idea, but I'm still thinking about my cube shapes. <laughs> <laughs> like the signature block with the high in the center and the low on either oh, side. Oh, that would be fun. You could do the same with the kite. Right. And low on either side or triangle and the square. square. Yeah. On either side. Okay. Any of those would be really fun. All right. Don't forget to vote. Um, the quote question we have is, have you made a temperature quote before? Is your answer yes? No, but Pam and Erica showed me, so it's now on my bucket list. That's the one. 
Okay, voting is now open, so let us know your answers. If you're watching via the registration link or on YouTube, you can click on the vote box below or to the right of the chat box. And if you're watching via Facebook, vote for the box that displays over the video. Quilters, at the start of the year, we introduced our Paying It Forward campaign called Covering the World, One Quilt at a Time. This campaign is a collaboration between AccuQuilt and Moda Fabrics, which Eric and I love, and Baby Lock as our sponsor. Together, one person from each of our teams is donating a quilt each week of 2022 to a charity of their choice, and Eric and I are the last two of the year. We are. Now, these donations have been really moving, and the charities the participating quilters have donated to have been wonderful choices. Be sure to visit our uh, website for details on how you, our viewers, can participate in covering the world one quilt at a time. Go to learn accuquilt.com slash quilt the world 2022. You can also follow hashtag quilt the world 2022 on social media. That way you can follow fellow quilters donations all throughout the year. All right, quilters, why our votes come in. Let's go to today's trunk show. Oh, okay. So this first one was a really fun idea. This is called the Go Cube 8 inch faux braid quilt. I'm gonna hold it like this so you can see. This the has faux got braids. fun, fun and over fabrics. This is all done in those kind of creams and blue tones, which yes. I love. But this would work really well for a temperature quilt. It would. You could use a smaller cube like the four or six inch cube, mm -hmm. and you could just make rows and rows and rows yeah. of them. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty. I do I too. Like this one. I do too. So the next one we wanted to feature because a lot of times people don't even think about being able to do this with our cubes, right, Pam? Right. People say, oh, do you, can you make a Bargello quilt? Why, yes, you oh, can. Yes, you can. Oh, here I here it is this now. One. Oh, this is called the Bargello music quilt pattern. Um, this is a die, uh, the musical medley die. So you can see our notes up and down. And this is really fun. It's got that red and white and gray color scheme. It's all kind of Valentine-y. It's Valentine-y. It is. And really here's fun. the back, because it has some valentine -y and a stripe binding. There we go. Just for oh, me for 2022. I didn't even notice that before. All right, next up is a really fun one. This is one that you can make. It uses one die for piecing the whole center. It's the Go Dahlia Delight Throw Quilt Pattern. It's by Bea Lea, Bea Quilter. And it uses the three inch finished half square triangle that comes in the box with the Go Me. This is one of those 180 patterns you can get. Those are all free patterns. So Sue, who's new to AccuQuilt, this is what you want to use. There Look you at go. how pretty, and I love that speckled fabric. I do too. It's mm. beautiful. The next one up we have is the Go Chains of Love Bed Runner. Okay, I'm gonna hold it this way so you okay. can see the color yes. variation. Because it's, it's super fun to see. This would be really cute. So I made this as a wedding gift, which I think is super fun, but totally you could make it a temperature quilt. Yeah, you could. And you could make it with any size of the strip dies. Right. Uh, this just would be super fast and easy to cut and to sew together. Great and option. You could totally um, take your fabric that you're gonna use, upload it to go quilt. Oh yeah. And then it take would create look at it. your own, and it would tell you the yardage, like you and I didn't do. Yeah. <laughs> well, just there you go. It. Speaking, yeah, quilt, of, speaking of strips, how about using the strip pizzazz pattern? Listen, so, so orange sickles. Or, <laughs> orange cream sickles. I actually really love this one. But what if you made your blocks bigger and you used seven strips? Oh, there you go. You had a block for each week. Right. Right, that would work. That would work. That would really be pretty too. And I like the fact that you could then, you know, turn some of them diagonal or, you know, horizontal right. you and vertical, switch horizontal. Them around vertical. and that would be really fun. Okay. okay, now the next one I think would be good for those, those San Diego Long Beach people. Oh, I love this pattern. Because this is the Go Aloha Stars Wall Hanging Pattern by Lee, Bea Lee, a Bea quilter with connecting threads fabric. Now see, she's got, I think it's seven different colors in yes. gradation. So for those places where there isn't as much right. differentiation. You could use seasons like, you know, yeah. the first quarter, second Spring, quarter, third summer, quarter. summer, winter, fall. Yeah, what was the average temperature? And this is all made with the Go Prairie Star die. Such a great die. And it looks difficult, not difficult at all quilters. We have a couple of gentle Y seams. Yep. Yep. And, and look at the back. And there's great videos to walk you through great videos. Fun swirly quilts. 
Okay, this one is so cool. This is producer Joe's favorite. This is go forward motion wall hanging pattern. Terry Vandenbosch of Lizard Creek Quilting Hi, made Terry. it with some wonderful Andover fabrics. And she's used, this is the half rectangle triangle from the five inch cube. But again, remember those shapes are the same in all the cubes yeah. and companions, just different sizes. So here you could do just like I'm doing it, you step. You know, just, it says go in motion, so go I'm in making motion. it go. Oh. Um, think how different <laughs> my quilt would be if I was using the half rectangle triangle instead of the half square triangle. There you go. I like the colors in this one. Good job, Terry. Oh, we have one more before I go to the wall. Oh, yes. So this is another great die. And this is actually a great like one die to use if you only could oh, yeah. pick one die to if use to on for a quilt. Today. If you have to start today. This is our largest equilateral triangle yeah. and it's called Go Majestic Pyramids. But this would be fun for a temperature Yeah, no quilt. Y seams, just great no. rows. And so those, um, you know, triangles. You'd get great secondary designs. It would be really yep. fun. And we have some videos that give you tips and tricks on how to uh, cut triangles. Mm -hmm. Again, this I think is the perfect one for go quilt. Yes. Because you be can just one. upload your fabric and be ready to go. Yes. Now I will walk. Now you can go to the one behind us. It's the Go Hexagon Garden Throw Quilt. This pattern is also by Amanda Harward from Marksburg Quilts. And here's what kind of inspired us earlier when we were thinking about those rosettes. Yep. So there's the center and then six. So this would equal a week. I really like this one. And Amanda did a great job quilting it. She really did. Okay. All of these patterns available as free downloads from the AccuQuilt website. Be sure to get your patterns downloaded before your die arrives so you'll be ready to go. All right, quilters, voting is now closed and they're gonna count up your answers. But first, our good friends at Riley Blake. So great. Look at these. Oh. They are helping us crank up the heat by providing these two amazing bundles of fabric that would be absolutely picture perfect for okay. a temperature I quilt. saw these a, a week ago and I almost lost my mind. <laughs> these are such beautiful fabrics. So I love them because they're solids, but they have those little tiny little gold. Little tiny gold and X's tone on for, tone X's. X's for the X's oh, 10 years for, of QuiltCon. Yeah. Look, and some purple. So this for you. is called Sparkler by Melissa. Yeah. For Riley Blake, and it's just it's all the colors. These it's are all the colors. Start. This is literally all the colors that I have in my quilt right here in one happy little bundle. All right, I guess I we have it. to give it away. I suppose so. All right, the first winner of a Riley Blake fabric selection is drum roll, please. Cynthia D from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Congratulations. Congratulations. And she has all the. She has She's got all the temperatures, temperature, so, so yeah. And the second winner of selection of fabric is drumroll, please. Donna W of Bolton, Connecticut. Congratulations. Congratulations. She also has all the colors. Oh yes. All right, we're gonna send them to you. Oh, thank you to Riley Blake for sponsoring today's show. We know our quilters are going to love using that fabric to add heat to their quilts. All right, quilters, early in the show, we ask if you have made a temperature quilt before, yes. the voting options were yes, no, but Pam and Erica showed me, and now it's on my bucket list. That's right. Our team has counted all of the votes, and the majority of you answered. Drum roll, please. Oh, oh finding, finding that a lot of people haven't but want to, especially yes. after everything we shared with you today. Yeah, lots of people so, have it on their bucket lots list. Lots of bucket list people today. Okay. Very good. All right, um, guess what? Before I go on vacation, we're gonna have a special show on yeah, Thursday. Which is why I'm letting her take tomorrow I off. know, I gotta get packed. Thursday, September 1st um, at 12 noon Central Time for a special show called Fall into National Sewing Month. That's right, we will be kicking off National Sewing Month and giving you a sneak peek of September's Die to Try series die. Yes. Now be sure to register for the show on the events page to win an exciting door prize. It's gonna be so much fun. And listen, you don't have to wait all the way till Tuesday after right. Labor Day That's to right. get the new Die to Try. 
Besides that, we want to use it this weekend. Yeah, we, I'm going to a quilt retreat, so I want to take it with me. All right, quilters, remember we have a Labor Day sale to help you kickstart your temperature quilts and any other projects you might have. To get your order in during the show, type in, open up a new tab, type in accuquilt.com slash party. It'll take you directly to the site and place your order. With our Labor Day sale, you can get 35% off the regular price of select categories, including go cutters, dies, cubes, storage, and books. Great time to get those companions to match your cubes. All eligible items are already marked down. No code needed to redeem the offer at checkout. Our smallest, most portable cutter, the GoMe Fabric Cutter Starter Set, is available for just $89.99. This starter set includes two go dies to make over 180 patterns, a cutting mat, and five easy patterns to get you started. It's also marked down, so it doesn't need any additional code to redeem the offer. Well, now pay later. Get your financing today at AccuQuilt.com slash financing. All right, before we uh, cool down on our show, yes. we have two special announcements. We do. Uh, first, we want to give a big happy birthday shout out to our good friend, Sharon. Yes. Um, it is her happy birthday today. Yes, We've it is. We've seen you at Tech Days, but wishing you a happy birthday. Yes. And we also have another one for our team. We do. Chelsea Graphics yes. is getting married this weekend. Congratulations. So um, we just want to wish her um, congratulations and tell her how happy we are for her and her and Scotty and Winnie. Yes. Okay, now we want you to go home and sew temperature quilts. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed today's temperature quilt inspiration. So many dyes can help you start this project. And be sure, be sure and share your temperature quilts oh, yes. on our social media. You can use our hashtag AccuQuiltBelt okay. or AQTemperature yes. so we can start looking at those. Absolutely. Because we want to see what dyes you're going to use. Do. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, if you've been waiting for our show to end before you buy, now is the time. Here's the link right now. Get everything you need while it's available. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time. So you can quilt more. We'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye.